right. So, uh, Suresha, we are starting our lesson today. It's based on analytical geometry, uh, specifically equations of a circle. Uh, are you seeing the screen? Yes, I can see it, sir. Okay. So, uh, what can you read under the objective? I want to be sure that you are seeing everything. All right, it says by the end of the lesson, the learner will be able to determine the equation, center, and radius of a circle. Okay, that's fine. So it means seeing everything that is there. Okay, no problem, sir. Thank you. Okay, a circle is a shape consisting of all points in a plane that are given that are a given distance from the center. Equivalently, it is a curve traced out by a point that moves in the plane so that distance from the center is constant. Okay, so no, I don't have anything that I'm struggling with there. Okay. And the next one? You can read. Okay. All right, so yeah, the just I got the, the radius aspect. That one I know fairly well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this, can you describe something for me here? Um, the diameter is equal to twice the radius, so the radius is equal to half of the diameter. Okay. And the diameter is a straight line to the center of the circle. So you just pay attention. So if you look at the diagram below, at the center of the circle, we have x. You know, a point is made up of x and y coordinates. So the x coordinate there is 2 and the y coordinate is y. So it means x is equal to 2. But as you already know, when we find the operational inverse of x is equal to 2, it becomes x minus 2. That is what you find in the bracket there to the power of 2. Have you seen that? x minus 2 in the bracket. Then yes, the y value is 3, meaning y is equal to 3. And the operational inverse of that will be y minus 3. So that also goes into the bracket before the power of 2 is outside the bracket. So what it is saying is that the center of a circle is represented by two coordinates. And these coordinates can be invented and put in brackets of that nature so that it becomes the equation of a circle. More of it we're going to discuss in the next step, okay? Okay, so. Now, I want you to take your pen and write this equation that you are seeing on the screen, the general equation of a circle, which is x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to zero. Write it down. And also write that the center is represented by a standard formula of negative g is to negative f. Okay, so I write it down now. Okay. And the next one you have to write is that the radius of the circle should be equal to the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. So write it down. All right, so I'll write it down. Now, uh, you don't have to write every other thing. When we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. Now, let's, let's get to another point. Look at the properties of the equation of a circle. Yes. And here is that when you see an equation of a circle, how will you know that this is called the equation of a circle? It must have properties to identify. So the first property is that the equation must be a second degree equation. What do we mean by a second degree equation? The power must be two. That is the meaning. So if you look at the equation you just wrote down in your book, the one with the x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to zero, you will see that the, the highest power in the equation is two. So if the power is more than oh, yeah. two, the power is more than two or less than two, then that is not an equation of a circle. Okay, so. Oh, I know you are intelligent, so you'll just be able to pay attention for now. So another property is that we do not have to see the product or the multiplication of x and y in the equation. So if you look at the equation, there is no stage where we have x times y. It must never happen. 
Mm -hmm. Then the next property is that in that equation we are referring to the coefficient. That is the number that is in front of x squared and y squared. They must be the same at all times. So if we have 2x squared, we must also have 2y squared. Whatever mm -hmm. coefficient of x squared must be the same as that of y squared. So these are the three properties now uh, I'm trying to tell you about. Now let's come to uh, the examples down here. I have listed about four equations and we have to determine whether they are the equation of a circle or not. Are you there? Yes, sir. Good. So let's take number one. X squared plus Y squared plus 4X minus 8Y minus 8 is equal to 0. For it to be an equation of a circle, it needs to be qualified by the three properties, one of the three properties that we listed there. Now, so what makes you think that it is an equation of a circle or not? The property is if it's a second degree, there's no multiplication between the x and y, and the coefficients of the x squared and y squared are the same. Excellent. So therefore, it's an equation of a circle. Look at the second one. The coefficients of the x squared and the y squared aren't the same. The second one. Yeah, it's 2x squared and then it's plus y squared, so their coefficients are not the same. So, so it can't be an equation. So it is not the equation of a circle. Next one. Mm -hmm. That looks right. So. Oh, no, no, there's an x, y there. There's an x, y. So there's a multiplication between the x and the y there. Yes, yes. Yes. It's a minus between the x squared and the y squared. So what, what are you trying to say? That the coefficients of x squared and y squared are not the same? Yeah, because it's negative one in front of y squared and Correct. it's one in front of x squared. Correct. So it's not an equation of a circle. Now, uh, as you remember, my surname is Nyaki. So this form of completing the square or this method of completing the square is the shortest, the simplest you can ever find, especially if you've done completing the square before. But God being so good, you said that I have already shown you this method. So let us proceed. Yeah. Now, to complete the square, we need to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is positive one at all times. Mm -hmm. OK. Why am I starting with a quadratic expression? The equation of a circle, as you saw it, is made up of two quadratic equations. I don't know if you identify that. We have x squared. Then we have y squared. So x squared mm -hmm. is quadratic on its own. Y squared is a quadratic on its own. So the two come together now to form the equation of the circle. It's as if we have one parabola, which is a maximum, like an N shape, and the other one, which is a U shape, which is minimum, joining together to form the circle. Can you can you uh, can just envisage that? Yeah, I can so. Yeah. So now, as you, you remember, completing the square, uh, uh, the formula is still here. The Nyakis principle is still there. So all we have to do now is we know that the coefficient of x squared is already 1. So we don't have to struggle about that. All we have to do is make sure that we divide b by 2. So yes. see it, we have x minus b over 2 all squared. Now, minus, if you move to the next bracket on the right, it is also supposed to be x minus 4 over 2 all squared. But the thing is that in completing the square, we need one variable only. We, we no longer have to repeat it at the next stage. That is why we have x here in the first bracket, and on the other one on the right, there is no x there. So that is just the simplest way I have done the method. So as you simplify, having known this method, 
you can see that the result will be x minus 2 all squared minus 1. Now, you can expand, as I showed you before, to determine the original equation to be sure that your factorization is correct. Is that fine with you? Yes, not something we have to do again. We are going to use two methods now to determine the equation of, to determine the center and the radius of a circle. The okay. first one is the x squared plus the y squared plus 2gx and then plus 2fy plus c is equal to zero. The second one is using the completing the square method to get the, the center, the radius, and all that. So we will be doing that in the examples. Now, for every learner who does not know how to complete the square, the must be taken through first, the process of completing the square. But the good thing is you know how to complete the square. That is why it, it no longer has to make any much sense there. So look at this one. You also know how to do this. Mm -hmm. You need to take out the common factor negative 2, and then you complete the square. At your caliber, we, we have to move on to the next one so that you see what can be done there. Now, this one is an exercise. Later, you, I will give you the video and then you go through it and do them on your own. But I'm very sure that you have not forgotten and you can complete the square on your own. Yes, sir. thank you. Okay, so let's move on to the next stage. Now look here, this is the equation of a circle. So we are going to see what to do with this now. We are going to use this to determine the center and the radius of the circle. I want you to write the given equation down, x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 6y is equal to 15. Write it down. Then after writing it, Suraja, Now, so what happens is that I've told you to write down the equation. I believe you did that. Yes, I did that. Now, if you look at this number here, negative 2 here, it is represented by 2G. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And if you look at this one, negative six here, it also represents the two F. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. equate the first one and solve for G and equate the other two F to negative six and solve for F and tell me what values you're going to get. Okay. So G is equal to negative one. Mm -hmm. And then the F, F is equal to negative three. Okay. F is equal to negative three, yes. Now, but do you remember that uh, when you are finding, now those values are for the coordinates of the center of the circle, what you just done. They represent okay. the coordinates of the center of the circle. But you have to substitute them into the formula, the circle, the center formula, which is negative G is to negative F. So write your center, write your center as negative G is to negative F. Then the value you got for G, substitute it, it will become double negative. So the answer will become one. And then for the F, in the center formula, there is already negative F. So substitute the negative three that you got. It will give you three. Have you seen that? 
No, wait, so I'm, uh, I'm not there yet. Okay, no. You remember I, I did this for you. Can you see the screen? Mm -hmm. uh, when, we, when I gave you that formula, I did, uh, I, there was something I told you to take note of, which was like this. And I said it represents the center of the circle. Yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Now, so I have now told you that you solve for G from here. You see that? Yeah. G is negative one. So here where there is G, you put negative one. Remember there is already negative here. So it will become a double negative. So it becomes a positive. Correct. Oh, okay. And then for G, the value is now negative. So if you substitute into the point, it will give you a positive three. Mm -hmm. So it'll be plus X plus three Y. Yes, yeah, so in the bracket, you see uh, uh, in the bracket, we are supposed to have X and Y. So the X mm -hmm. is the G and the Y value is the F. Okay. So the point now, one is to positive three. That becomes the center of the circle. Okay, so. Now, for this same general equation, remember that the, the radius, okay, uh, my writing, never mind, okay? It's uh, G squared, right? But you must put it in a bracket, all right? Okay, sir. So. F squared, all right. Then what happens? It will be minus what? C. I hope you remember that. Yeah, I have it down, so. Oh, yes. So okay. the root must cover everything. So this becomes the radius. So what is the value of the radius? But the C value, uh -huh. we don't... Yeah. C value, I want to see what value you're going to give me. <laughs> okay. Hey, from top to down, like what you've done for the 2G and the 2F, what value will you give to the C? 15. Yes, but will it be positive? Because if you look at where the C is, is different from where the 15 is. No, it will be negative. Correct. So your C will be negative 15. And remember, because we are putting the variables in a bracket, so your negative 15 must be in a bracket. You see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do it and give me the answer. Right, so. I'm getting a math error, so. Math error? Yeah, I don't know if I'm putting something in wrong. Look, what is the G value? Negative one. If you square it, you get what? One. One. What is the value of F? It's negative three. Square it, you get what? Three. I'm oh, sorry, nine. nine. Uh, so nine plus one will give us what? Ten. Okay. Now, here in this bracket, you have negative 15, right? Mm hmm so negative 15 times negative 1 will give us what? Positive 15. Okay, so now you have 10. Then plus 15, what do you get? Oh, yes, 5. Yeah? Huh? 5. I got radius of 5. All right, so it becomes the square root of 25, which gives you... Yeah. Right. Okay. So, have you seen how this thing works? Yeah, I forgot to change the sign of the 15 in the square of that side. 
Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Okay. So that is one thing you have to remember. But let me just take you through quickly. You see, like I'm taking you through to see how you did the work on your own. Instead of doing it for you, you have been able to do it. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you can see clearly. I can take off the red stuff. And then no, I can see so don't worry. Okay, all right. So that is how you arrive at the solution. So take note that when we get to the next stage, you'll be able to see similar things and do them without any hassle, right? Okay, sir. So let's move on to the next one. So I've just shown you how it is done in a, 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 the same way you did it and you got the answer. All right, mm -hmm. so to the next page. So now uh, I want us to use the second method now. The first one is comparing the two equation, right? Now this time I want us to use the completing the square method. So the same equation, we should determine the center and the radius, but using the completing the square method. So now I want yes, to regroup, regroup it. Now it is regrouped for you. So I want you to complete the square for the two parts, for the x part, the x quadratic and the y quadratic. And tell me what the center is going to be and the radius will be. If there is any challenge, let me know and I'll assist you. So, so it'll be, will it be x minus 2 and y minus 6? y squared minus 6 and uh, I'm a bit confused. What, what do you substitute in the a and what b? What's your center? Oh, okay. So we have to let the uh, e minus 2 and minus 6. So that's your coordinate. Are you there? Yeah, is minus two and minus six your coordinates? Are you sure? Remember that you have to divide B by two. Can you see that? You complete the square for the left, which is 2x squared, uh, sorry, which is x squared minus 2x, then plus, then you complete the square for y squared minus 6y. Oh, okay, so the, uh, uh, oh, okay, I understand now. It's because it looks a bit different from using one equation only. That when we come to the equation of a circle now, it is two quadratics now joined together. Okay. Yeah. It's no longer one. So when you simplify, you will definitely have to arrive here. And I want you to see how you are going to arrive there also. Does it make sense? Yeah, no, I just need to grasp onto it. I need to um, look at it for a bit. Because we will have the second example. You have to do it all by yourself. So this is the stage where you have to grab it very well. Once you grasp it very well here, the next stage you will be able to do it and 
there is no other exam questions you cannot answer. Yeah, though it's a bit strange because there's no um, constant to add the value to or uh, nothing like that. It's just a. Uh, is that? Expression. As you then solve, you move all the constants to the right because it is now an. It is no longer an expression. In the expression, you don't move the constants because there is no equal to sign. Now we are in equation. So in equation, there is something on the right. So you group like terms. Where there are alphabets, you keep them. Where there are numbers, you take them there. Yes. Is that fine with you now? Yes, sir. Okay. So can I move on? Just, um, I need 30 seconds, sir. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, okay. Take the 30 seconds and work things out. Okay, so. Okay. So can you see what happened there now? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So whatever is in the bracket, you just equate it to zero. And then you solve for X, you solve for Y. And then those values become the center. You, you no longer have to put it inside negative G, negative F, because this uh, completing the square does uh, not have anything to do with the other method. So this is another method of finding the center and the radius of a circle. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'm giving you two, uh, two things at the same time. So as for the radius, you see, as, uh, as you can see, I compare the two formulas now. X minus A all squared plus Y minus B all squared is equal to R squared. So the 25 in the given equation on the right side of the equation is equal to the R squared. Can you see mm -hmm. that? Now? So if you just equate them, then you solve for R by finding square root of both sides, then the value becomes five units. Yes. Okay, can I move on? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, look at what is here. Do not worry about the solution part, but take the equation, okay? Take the equation 3x squared plus 3y squared plus 6x plus 12y plus 9 equal to 0 using this this method based on the equation x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to zero and determine the center and the radius without being assisted you just do it on your own and verify it So if you didn't reduce the coefficients like in the second step, would you still arrive at the same answer? You have to reduce because for you to work with the equation of a circle, the coefficients of x and uh, x squared and y squared must always be positive one. Oh, okay. So whenever you see that, the, the first thing you should do is make sure that you take out the, uh, how do you call it? the coefficient, you reduce them to a unit value. I got root two. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. The center? It was um, one and one colon two. Yeah, but you see, when you are using this uh, general equation, you have a specific formula for the center. Mm -hmm. negative. Oh, the negative signs, I forgot it. Yeah. You see that? 
Yeah, I forgot it's minus G and minus F. You, you use that only for this type of equation. Shall we continue? Yes, sir, we can continue. Okay. So now we are going to use the second method. So complete the square for this equation and determine the center and the radius to see if you will get the answer that you got previously. Okay, sir. Okay. Let's see uh, what you got. Tell me. I got R is equal to root 2. Mm -hmm. And, your and the same. Center is equal to minus 1 and minus 2. Okay, let's see. Planation. You see, you like all these steps are even too many. You can jump over a number of them. But because I am trying to explain it, I have to make it more lengthy. Okay, that's to be lengthy. Okay, so. sir. So now, now that you've got clue of what it is, uh, you can just make short step. Okay. Now, okay. determine the center and the radius of the following. There are too many. I just want you to do uh, question one. Quest, uh, question A, question, uh, question C, D, and okay, let me start. Let, let's start like this. Question E, what is the center? Um, two and minus two and three. No, two and minus three. Two and minus three. Correct. What is the radius? Uh, three. Correct. Now look, look carefully. So that is how you go. Now look at question C. What is the center? Center. Root X and root Y. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you can see that we don't have a value of the, the x of the center and the y of the center. Is that correct? Yeah. So what so that's just x and y. Yeah, so, so it means that the uh, zero is to zero. Okay. Yes, because once there is no value for it to, to work out and be in a bracket, yeah. and the center of the circle is zero is to zero x is zero y is zero that is where we have pythagoras theorem so the formula of the pythagoras theorem is the equation of a circle where the center is zero is to zero. Oh, okay it means the circle lies on the cartesian plane where the center of the circle is exactly at the origin of the cartesian plane where the x and y meet zero zero Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. What is the radius now? It's two. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. Now, look at question F. Yes. So zero and zero is your center. And then what is it? Can you see something? Yeah, the 6x. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the 6x is not a constant. Mm -hmm. So you have to regroup it. So would you move it to the left hand side of the equation? Yes. That to become what? And then. Oh, then will it be 
Then you would you group the x squared and the six x? Yes. And then would you complete the square? Yes. And then, <laughs> then you'll get an answer. So you know that one now you see that one coordinate that is for the y of the center will still be zero. But the okay. coordinate will no longer be zero because you have x squared minus six x. So if you if you want to complete the square there, it will become x minus three because it's six over two minus six over two. So that becomes x minus three all squared plus y squared. But remember that after saying x minus three all squared, you must say minus and square the three. So it means that you are going to have nine, negative nine. Then you move. Mm -hmm the right side. Have you got that? Oh, so a constant will be created and then you move it to the right. Are you sure you, 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 you are following what I'm, what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I get it though. So what to be the radius? Nine and then you root nine, it will be three. Correct. So that will... Yeah. The radius will be three units. So it means the center, what will be the center? X minus this will be three and zero. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So I have brought the uh, solutions here. Uh, at a later stage, you'll be given all these questions and then you work them out. But some, you've already done them right in front of me, which is good. <laughs> Congratulations for that. So, obviously, Thank you, sir. that is the end of today's lesson. Uh, it's, it's interesting and fascinating also that you have been able to complete the lesson successfully. And so you can take that book I gave you the last time and do questions that are based on the equation of a circle in math paper two. All right. Okay, so if I encounter any problems, I'll let you know. Definitely. Right. Yeah. Then Thank you, sir. There is one other part of circles which we will do. That is when a circle meets a tangent, but it's going to be easy for you uh, due to how you understand things. Thank you, sir. Now, so uh, obviously, uh, I just want you to, to let me know as to